All right, uh, recording in progress. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to SEO Happy Hour episode. In today's episode, we have a very special guest, Ben Kozelnik. And he is very experienced and like we, he is going to help us is about talking how to stand out in your CV applications, how to make a difference uh, from other huge number of other applicants. He's also a um, director of content at Maple. And uh, what I was find very interesting about Maple is actually it's it's similar platform that we have like Upwork on like Fiverr, but actually what is different about them is that they are communicating with the candidates firstly, and then they are matching uh, uh, the, the right candidate with the jobs and agencies. But please correct me if I uh, made a generalization. So Ben, welcome to today's episode. And uh, thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm excited. So was I uh, correct about Maple, about the uh, matching candidates, agencies, and companies? Yeah, we, we basically vet all our experts and we match them to the right brand based on a bunch of a bunch of uh, data points. But we also then manage that relationship. So we provide marketing strategy for free to all our clients. And then we handle some of the back office things like we handle payments, operational things. So we make it easier for the brands and for the experts. Mm, nice, nice. But yeah, it's a great community. So yeah, actually, it's something that like we all need. So you probably seen uh, hundreds and hundreds like candidates and like CVs. Can you uh, uh, um, maybe uh, talk about like top three mistakes that people uh, do in their uh, job applications? Sure. I think the biggest thing that differentiates candidates is when your KPIs are performance based. So when when I say, oh, I know how to write content really well, that's not very impressive anymore, especially with Chat GPT. But even before AI, like whenever that was pre-COVID, it wasn't that impressive. Okay, you write really well. That's great. So we're gonna hire you as a part-time freelancing, you know, freelancer and writer and whatever. But if you really want to get an in-house SEO job or even manage the the content team, you have to show that you've grown either traffic or leads or customers. And that's what all the best SEO agencies are doing. That's all the posts that you see on LinkedIn. People say, look, I've grown traffic from X to Y, or even better, this is you know the increase in leads that we saw. Because ultimately traffic is not that valuable if it doesn't convert. But the first stage is knowing, okay, I know how to rank things and bring traffic. The next stage is how do I bring leads? So I think that's the, the biggest differentiator. People should put that on their profiles front and center. Mm -hmm. if, you know, any kind of achievement like that. The other thing I think that's really lacking is A-B testing. Like for SEOs especially, because so many things are so long-term. You write something, two months later it could rank, you know? So... I don't think people are spending enough time looking back and seeing what worked, what didn't work and making a list. Here's the things I've tried. Here are the things that worked. And I think when you interview for a new job, you can say, here are the strategies I tried, you know, and instead of making it sound like, well, I know some things kind of maybe, you know, say, you know, concrete things and you've, you've tried them. That's a huge one. Mm -hmm. And do you think that even like in these testing and like trying experiments, like even saying like, hey, it didn't work, but this is like what I have learned is making a positive difference and like seeing like, yeah, that is the mindset that we are looking for. Yeah, because you could always say, okay, here's how I would do it differently this time. Mm -hmm. And you can apply it to that new new opportunity. So that's huge. But yeah. I think that's something that, that's something that my manager taught me back back in the day. You have to test. The marketers that are serious, they do testing. The guys that aren't, they don't do testing. Yeah. But SEOs are so afraid to say actually, hey, I did a mistake. Like even they did, they that they, they have learned, but like saying this is like was this was wrong or like I shouldn't go in that direction, like is so hard. So how we can encourage people to actually like 
making mistake is just mistakes uh, are just like paths to grow. So there is no uh, right and wrong. It's just like growing phrase. And in most of cases, you learn more from mistake than just like when everything is is good, right? Yeah, for sure. But also, it's really hard to to say that something I did was wrong. It could you could say it didn't fit the client or didn't work in this case. Mm -hmm. didn't work for this website but there's so many data points so many variables it's hard to say you know what exactly yeah if i'm publishing content that's crappy that's obvious but you know if if everything checks out you're following all the fundamentals that's hard to say something that was the wrong maybe it was the wrong direction so I, I would encourage people to not say you know black and white thinking you know i'm good i'm bad i don't know what i'm doing mm -hmm. if you if you've tried something out, you've built out a strategy, then maybe that particular strategy didn't work for the client. Not necessarily a bad strategy. Yeah. And also that mistake on like wrong approach doesn't define you as a good or bad SEO. It's just like one thing and that time. So it's just a moment. It's not like for a life or career. Yeah. And when you mentioned like KPIs and like mentioning uh, uh, in the CV, would you uh, limit yourself to only like the most important KPIs, leads, kind of like revenue, the organic traffic, or would you go like a little bit like broader? I would also mention how many pages you rank on the first page of Google. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of people say, okay, great, you wrote a bunch of stuff. No, but like I actually know how to rank them. So if you, you have that skill set, even if it doesn't matter whatever niche you're in, I would mention here's how many pages I ranked. Um, or also the various types of content that you published. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Can you think about uh, any more uh, very common mistakes people do? I think a big problem we have in SEO is that people aren't transparent enough. You know, so many SEOs you work with, you ask them, okay, can you share some of the things you did? And they just don't want to share with you. They don't want to, they know it's a secret. I'm not going to tell you. And it's a does a big disservice to everyone, I think, because then we don't learn from each other. And ultimately, if I'm not sharing it with people, then I don't know if I'm on the right track. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important just to be transparent. People always value transparency and honesty over even if you your performance was lacking, but you're transparent and honest and willing to grow. I think employers love that more than this hotshot superstar that's just not going to tell you what they're doing at all. Mm -hmm. And is it just connected to employers or even like when we are applying for new jobs and they are asking for a new portfolios or like something like that, like how we can actually share some of our like past clients not mentioning the name but like we know like google search console like these kinds of reports like do you have any kind of like tip how to actually present your work but like not um share the client detail all the webs all the website url because like that can be uh, policy or like something like that so it depends if you're your own, you know, if you're just trying to get a client, you're a freelancer or an SEO agency, then I would say get as many case studies up as possible. Do like video interviews with your clients. Try to get their permission early enough so that you don't have to get it right before you submit something. But if you're, I don't really have that experience because I've been in-house for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when I'm, you know, if I'm applying, if I'm working for another client, even if I'm doing a Maple project, they already know that I've worked, that I've grown Maple's blog. So it's not, it's, um, it's not something they ask for. But yeah, essentially screenshots, take out the customer's name and just put the screenshot. And you can use, if they don't let you use the data from Google Search Console, just use it from Ahrefs. Mm -hmm. and brush. Nice. And... You mentioned also like in-house. Do you see any difference like from the candidates that are coming from the agency or like when they are coming from in-house or like freelancer role? Like, do you see any kind of like um, positive and negative like characteristics like that they are bringing to the table for the future employer? 
Yeah, I think I think in-house takes a whole different mindset. That you are, it's not just about me and my growth and my paycheck, but it's about the whole team. Mm. And employers are going to ask you, okay, can you train the other team members? So you're putting a lot more effort. You know, our in-house content marketer at uh, Maple, you know, we've I've trained her on SEO. We've worked together for a while. So it's a, it's a whole different relationship versus a freelance writer. I'm not going to explain, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get a chance to really train them and explain the whole strategies and everything. So I think it's different. I think people view candidates from in-house roles as more dedicated, more, you know, all in. Mm -hmm. And it definitely has a value. So many people talk about being self-employed and the freedom and I, I think the opposite. I think sometimes it's so much nicer to build something greater together. Like if you work for a company that has 100 employees, 1,000 employees, you're part of something bigger. And take it's, it's so much better to work with a team, get to know your teammates, help, you know. And you're also not really ranked on your performance when you work with a bigger team, but you're ranked on their performance. So it's... It's a different ball game. Mm -hmm. And what about agency? Agency work. Agencies, agencies come and go. I mean, that's the nature of the agency world. Sometimes they have somebody at the top who's really good at selling and getting clients. And then it's really difficult to find somebody at the bottom, so to speak, like the person doing the work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've vetted so many agencies, some of them, talk a good game, you know, they can describe everything they're doing and they sound great. When you get to it, they don't have any specific processes in, in place or they assign you people that aren't experienced enough. They don't know what they're doing. So it could be really frustrating. So that's why kind of with Maple, we vet more of the, sh the smaller agencies mm -hmm. where the founders are still doing that day-to-day -day work and, and it's a much smaller team. Because uh, those are just easier to track and and make sure that the quant that quality is the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, also uh, coming back to these like candidates. Uh, okay, for the for the CV, would you recommend having a CV or like it's you know it's always a question like should I be put the picture? Should I make it like one pager, like two pagers? So let's bring the light to these questions. For sure, with a picture, and for sure, I'd make it one pager. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I would say your LinkedIn is much more powerful than your CV. Mm. Like, there's several opportunities I've gotten just from people seeing my LinkedIn. So I would recommend people optimize your LinkedIn profile. You can even pay somebody to make sure and give you tips on how to optimize it and post all of your successes, all the strategies you're, you're testing. You can even post a few times a week. It doesn't have to be every day. And that, just from people seeing your face regularly, will make them feel like, wow, that guy knows what he's talking about, or that girl knows what she's talking about. You yeah. know, and so many times we see, you know, a talk that somebody gave in the SEO world. And if I recognize their face, because I've seen it on LinkedIn, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know them. It's a whole, it's like, I've already made my first impression. So I would say people, that's why I put my face on my on my CV because people have seen me on LinkedIn already. Um, but yeah, LinkedIn is huge. I wouldn't yeah. have people, people should focus on that much more. Okay. So we have one pager with a picture, with the KPIs and uh, 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 what we also mentioned, like KPIs and, and uh, uh, what was the second thing that we learned? Transparency. Transparency. And testing. Testing, yeah, I totally forget about testing. And then LinkedIn profile. And once we get to that stage, once we are interviewing basically face-to-face, -face, what is uh, something that uh, makes a difference like here in, in the kind of like more closer stage to the final check? That's a really good question. Um. I think it's all going to be about the assignment, ultimately. Because mm -hmm. nowadays, people give you assignments as part of the interview process. 
And I would say that's everybody could talk a good game on the interview, but uh, they'll actually check if that you know what you're talking about in the assignment. So mm -hmm. if that's an SEO audit or some written content or what have you, I would focus on that, make sure that looks really good. I made a mistake a few years ago. I didn't create a slide deck. I was interviewing for a company. It was like a head of content position. And they, they, they sent me like a Google Doc with some questions. And I thought, oh, well, whatever. I can just describe the answers to them. And I just wrote it out. And that was a mistake because so many people probably applied with uh, like a nice slide deck and everything. So that's what I'd say to candidates nowadays. Do a slide deck. Even if they didn't ask you to do it, just, you know, showcase your work visually. It would make a big difference. And also send it to other people that are in similar positions to ask them for feedback. See if maybe you missed something. Mm -hmm. And um, here we came like uh, to a very big discussion about working like free work for uh, for like these companies while, while you are applying. So people are saying like somebody is actually taking the advantage of you, like they are sending to you like some SEO the audit and then like there are so many different cases that people have done like SEO audits they put so many hours there but actually they're just like getting a feedback we go we went for uh, with uh, another candidate so there is always discussion should we work for free in like these assignments or like should we have a different strategy so how to actually uh, uh, protect us for doing some free work and uh, avoid like these companies that are taking advantage of us. Wow, sorry about that, my internet went out. Oh, okay, no worries. What was the Such last thing that you he heard? You said other companies and then you froze like this. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, basically my question was like how to avoid uh, that other companies are taking the advantages and like that we are working for free for these SEO audits. So they are coming back for, for us and just like how to protect us to actually make sure that like this company is legit and they really want to check our knowledge, not take advantage of us. It's a really good question. I would say the bigger the company, the less likely that they're taking advantage because they probably just get so many applicants that it's part of their process to have a longer interview process. Um, yeah, it just depends. If it's smaller and if it's just too much work, if it's going to take too many hours, I would say maybe set expectations and say, okay, here's how much, here's how many hours I have to dedicate to this task. Would that be okay? Or can I do part of it or whatever? And if, Honestly, if if you've already showcased your results on your LinkedIn and you've posted about it and you've shown people your your graphs, your traffic, they're not gonna ask that much of you because they already they've already read your stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would I would recommend just look at also the reputation of that company. If they have a good reputation and this is their process and they have an HR department and whatever, chances are. You know, they're not taking advantage of you, but it is more competitive now. Mm -hmm. So employers ask for more very yeah. often. And also, this is a moment when you actually check, do you really want to work for this employer? Because even they are giving you a website, for example, for SEO audit, you can actually go there and like tweak it okay can i go with a, another like different website just like to check and like make sure that like they are not taking the advantage of of you and like they are uh they really want to check the knowledge and all the questions and all kind of like small requirements during these kind of like interview questions it is also a good uh, uh, approach to check do you really want to work with these people because like if they are not flexible if they are not giving you any kind of like I don't know, any things that you need, then you should just like stop and check like, hey, do I really want to work for this employer in the future when I need a sick day, when I need a time off and I need something from them like, and they are not flexible, they are not kind of like respect me in any way. Yeah, and it's more than that. Also, there's 
other red flags you could see, like if their marketing is all upside down, mm-hmm. you know, they don't, their website is not set up. And if they're aware of that, and if they're willing for you or someone else to come and improve things, that's one thing. But if you're going to be doing SEO work, creating content where they don't have their fundamentals in terms of their marketing, it's going to be a waste of your time. You're not going to get anywhere mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. to really weigh that in. How much do they understand? And also about education. Sometimes a CEO is just about every month you have to tell your employer it takes time. You have to educate them. You know, I've had a lot of these calls where it's like, okay, how come this isn't ranking? Okay, we just published it a week ago. You I know? wish it's every month. It's every week, actually. Yeah, every week. <laughs> Yeah. But it's about education. Sometimes it's better when the employer knows about SEO and they have the right approach. Mm-hmm. But right off the bat, I would say, build out a strategy and say, this is exactly what I'm doing in the next three to six months. And yeah. uh, so they know that you're on top of it. And the biggest, one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give is don't wait for them to ask you how it's going. Send them weekly reports. Here's what I've done. Here's our metrics. Every month, make a slide deck and present to them, here's our performance, even if you just started or even if you don't have much, you know, nothing has changed. But still show them, here's what we've done, here's what I'm planning to do next month, answer their questions on, you know, why things are going well here, but not so well over there. You know, it's, yeah. it's uh, and it'll make it clear for you to remember what you did. Because sometimes, you know, we have those weeks where, I just optimize stuff or I'm doing internal linking for eight hours straight. I don't remember how, you know, what did I do all week? So just writing it down throughout the week. Here's how many, which pages I've optimized, how many, so that I could, at the end of the week, I can send it to my boss and say, here's what I've done. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And if they are not, if they don't want to implement like these things, then like go check competitors and present what competitors are doing because like then the mindset is switching. <laughs> yeah for sure All right. okay so we got to the final stage of the interview and um, what do you think like the uh, just like the energy the attitude the mindset is making the impact for the final stage of interview and saying like yeah maybe this candidate is uh bigger of a technical or like content skills but the attitude is not something that will fit to the company Rather, like, should we go with another candidate that has a growth mindset, like the the positive attitude? Maybe it's technical, like lacking. But do you think actually the personality is making a, a, a change and difference in comparison to only like people who are very technical, or very content, or like as who are very good with the uh, SEO skills itself? Yeah, I think personality is huge. Um, yeah, especially for bigger teams, you want to make sure that they fit your team. They're a team player that they will fit the culture. And I think the biggest asset is humility mm-hmm. and, and willingness to try new things. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely huge. But that's something you have to, each person has to work on. You know, I feel like our own emotional personality development is like, another area of my life that I have to work on. It's not just work, fun, you know, family, but it's also my own personality development, which is huge. So, yeah. And did you see that actually uh, people are usually like, I know it's generalization, but like, does like, especially like SEOs, does, do they uh, lack more soft skills or like more SEO skills? Well, I've worked with only a few, but so far, I definitely think SEOs can get a little too technical and lack the soft skills. Um, Writers, content marketers usually have the soft skills. So I would say pick out an SEO that has an experience in content and then you get both the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think, I don't think technical SEO is such a priority these days. I think a lot of people are focusing, they want to make sure somebody knows all the technical stuff, but that's not necessarily needed. It's more, uh, the strategy I think is more important. 
what you're testing, how you're testing it, ability to publish content that's really good, not just fluff that ChatGPT spit out, and those kinds of skills, and then and then communicating with the team. I think that's more important than any kind of technical ability because you can always hire like a consultant for a few hours to make sure your some of the technical stuff is fixed, or you can talk to your developers. But I think the soft skills is is uh, crucial. Mm -hmm. Should they include soft skills in the series? No, because it's like self-explanatory. Like you're gonna see who the person is based on you know talking to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is no more no more like communicational skills, presentational skills. <laughs> yeah, don't have that. That's just a given. You have to have those already. Yeah, yeah, you need to have that. All right, Ben. So it was very nice talking with you. I think we went through all the stages and the most common mistakes that SEOs or just like people who are applying for jobs are making. So thank you so much for this conversation. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. We can do an another topic in the future. I'm happy to have you. For sure. For sure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye-bye.